My name is Brody, Light Harmonic. And I'm Aaron with Light Harmonic. And as you can already tell, we're going to take apart 2014 Tesla Model S P85. Now at Light Harmonic, we make an audio system for the Tesla Model S. We have a sample of our amp right here, along with our beautiful aftermarket speaker and a custom-made bracket. The system is totally plug and play. We have videos in the link below to the full install of the sound system. Today we're going to do a more detailed in depth tear down of the car. We're going to tear apart the front, the interior, and the rear. We're also going to pull out the media center console and take a look at what's behind there, including the wiring. Hope you guys enjoy the video and learn something along the way. Please subscribe. Alright, hello everyone. We're here with our Tesla Model S P85. So we're going to start at the front. There we go, we open our hood. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to remove this rubber ring around the inside. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so we just removed this rubber ring right here. It just slips out. It's, it's got a, a seam that goes ahead and fits around the tub. So the next thing we're going to do is these rubber lid stops. They're screwed in, so all I have to do is twist and remove. There's one on this side and the passenger side. Welcome back. We just removed these studs. As you can see, they're threaded, they're unscrewed. The next thing we're going to do is we remove these three panels. They go ahead and they're held in by clips. So all we can do is we get a good grip. We can unclip them. They slide backwards. So here's one. Let's do the passenger side. Passenger side. And the last one is the front windshield. Next part we're going to do is we're going to move this tub. We got these four studs that are threaded in place. We're going to unscrew those. And there's this guy right here. He's got two clips pressing them in. We're going to go ahead and pull those clips out and pull this guy up. Just removed our three body panels one, two, and three. We also removed our studs. This is what they look like. They just unthread from these four. So, next thing we're going to do is this guy comes out down here. There are two plugs. This one goes to the light on top, and this one goes to the front release on bottom. Let me set this aside. This top center piece is held in by sticky Velcro, so we can go ahead and remove this. You can see our Velcro. Set this aside. Next, these two carpet inserts come out, driver's side and passenger side. Next, we're going to undo all the bolts in the tub. There's two up front. There's another four along the side. And all these around this insert tub. These two up top, along with these two on the side, are 13 millimeters, and the rest are 10 millimeter bolt heads. So this, we have just removed all of our bolts inside of our tub. This guy right here, we're going to go ahead and slide outwards, and he comes out. This front cover also has to come out. There are two tabs. You can lift the top up and lift them off. There's one on the other side. And then this front panel is going to come off and that allows us to remove our tub. So we've just removed this panel right here. It's held in my clips. So once you pull it out, here's the tub. I'm going to slide it straight out. Now I do have to say in the D model or the Model S, they have the front motor mounted right behind where this tub is, so in those versions, they do not have this tub. Now, before we can remove this, there's a cable running underneath these clips that go to the front latch. So we, underneath these two clips, unclip the cable, make sure it's free. Once it's free, you can remove the tub. Alright, so just removed our whole 
frunk right here. You can see nicely inside of the car. Next what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly show you uh, the fuse that pertains to the premium audio system because that's part of what we do here at Light Harmonic. Um, in our full kit, you have to also swap out the fuse for the premium amp. So we're going to go ahead and dive into that real quick and show you. There are two fuse boxes right here that have most of your fuses and relays for your daily needs. But for some reason, behind this strut is there's another fuse box and that's the fuse box we need to get to. So first thing we're going to do is there's a clip here that we're going to have to remove. We also have to pull this back. There's another clip in this corner and remove this air box. Let's go ahead and do that. So we removed our air box cover. And here's our air filter. These clips are the same mushroom style clips that were in the front that were removed. There was one here and one right here behind this flap. Now this allows us to move this back so we can move the rest of the air box. We have our air box ready to be removed. As you can see here, there is a 10 millimeter bolt right there and one on the mirrored side as well. Down in there. And there's two clips right on top. Once we undo the bolts and the clips, this front half of the box will come out. Bolted and unclipped our air box. So it comes out straight ahead. This is what your air box looks like. Next thing we're going to get to is this is the fuse box that we're going to get to. You can go ahead and pop the cover off. And right there, there is a purple colored fuse. That is our fuse that we're going to get to. See our fuse box replacement video in the link below to know how to swap that fuse out and what amperage to use. We've just gotten to our fuse box and removed the air box. I thought we were going to point out a few little tidbits. So this nose cone comes off and once before we actually killed the car. The battery pack had plenty of battery but there's actually a 12 volt battery that's orange located back there that runs a lot of the standby systems. When we originally had the car apart we drained completely the standby systems from the battery. So it was dead, we couldn't start the car, we couldn't turn the head unit on. So you can actually jump start a Tesla if this happens to you. You can remove this nose cone. And behind this nose cone, there's two posts. There's a red post here, and a black post over here that you can hook your uh, Tesla up to and you can recharge that 12 volt car battery. Once it's charged, make sure it's at 12 volts and your car should turn on and start as normal. So let's go ahead and remove this nose cone. It's held in by normal car clips. What you can do, is with a pry bar. Go ahead, work your way around the nose cone, get behind there, find a nice spot, and start peeling it back. So let's go ahead and move our nose cone. As you can tell, it is held on by normal clips. They have aligning pins down below. There's also two sensors with just normal plugs. Once the nose cone is removed, you can get a good view down here of where you can charge the car. There's a red post with a nice cap on it. And here's another post welded to the front bumper that you can charge your car from. And today we're going to remove the passenger side front door panel. In order to do that, there are actually two inserts in one in this slot, and right underneath there is a 10 millimeter bolt. And the second one is going to be behind the handle, right behind this plastic insert. I'll take that right off. And you can see right here is a two T30 Torx screws. Alright, so once you remove the two T30 Torx screws and the 10 millimeter bolt, you're going to go ahead and take a nylon pry bar and go around this entire edge of the door panel. You're going to apply moderate force to make sure you don't break anything. Alright, so now that we have the door panel off, you see there are multiple wires and you're going to go ahead and remove each one of them. It's fairly simple.
Right. So now that you've got them all off, just place it down and you got your door off. Alright, welcome back. We've just removed our door panel from this Tesla. I'd like to spend a minute with you talking about the speakers of this car. The speaker I have in front of you is from the rear door of this car. Now this speaker is equipped with a premium sound system, which means it has these speakers in the front. Now the bass sound system has all four of these all around. Premium's got these two in the front, along with a subwoofer, and the bass is not a subwoofer. As you take a look here, this is our premium sound system speaker. In a comparison, here's the back. Now these are made by Sin Audio. Now when we developed ours, we mimicked their plug as well, and their bolt pattern, and for a flush fit and finish speaker. So our system is completely plug and play. Unbolt theirs and bolt in ours. All right, so welcome back. And now we are gonna remove the rear passenger side door panel. And same thing as the front, we're actually gonna go ahead and take off the rubber insert that we already did and the plastic insert. And again, there's also the 10 millimeter bolt and the two T30 torque screws in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take another pry bar, remove the door, apply light pressure, take off, go around all the clips. And inside there's actually a few less cables because the rear door is actually all electric compared to the front. So we're going to go ahead, start moving them. And like on the opposite side of the car, they are basically the same, so you can do the same process. So the next thing we're going to work on today is removing the subwoofer. It's located here behind this carpeting. Now the subwoofer is only found in the premium audio sound system, which this car has. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work our way up, down to this piece, and this arm. So first remove this piece up here. It's got a T25 Torx bolt up here. We've already backed out parts of this panel to make it easy. There's the screw. Next, you're going to work on removing this panel up here. It's held together by your normal clips. And there we have it. You can see your two clips guide, clip, clip. And this guide right here goes into here, holds this piece on. The next piece we're gonna remove is this piece down here. Now take note that as this piece goes down here, it's got a slot that this mates into. So what we're gonna do is slightly hold this back as you remove this panel. All right, so we now have this panel free. Here's the tab slot that we were discussing previously. It's held in by two clips. Next thing we're gonna remove this is a section of carpeting. There are two carpet plugs. Nice second one. Now we're going to move this carpet section down here. It is tabbed underneath this carpeting and underneath this carpeting. So get a good grip. Go ahead and pull. And there we go. Next thing we're going to do is remove this section of carpeting. So it has a light behind it that you're going to remove. Now this carpeting is slotted underneath this frame. Go ahead and pull it down and out. There's another tab up here, you can use a pry tool. Now be careful with these when you're removing them to apply even pressure straight backwards as not to bend or break the clips. Now we have our carpeting free. One quick note is this cutout right here goes over this bar right here. 
On some models, this will be encapsulating. It'll just be a very small slot and allows it to kind of click into place over that bar. This model does not have that. It's just a straight up cut in this section. The next thing we're going to do is remove this black panel right here. Now there are two T30 bolts on top. We're going to go ahead and remove. Now, as you can see here, this panel has the holes where the carpeting plugs went into. Now, I've seen this on various cars. This plug either is occupied or not occupied. Right now, this car came with it not occupied. Once it's unbolted, this panel goes and slips out. Now, it reveals three 10 millimeter bolts, one up top here, two down below here that we're gonna now remove. While you're at it, you can go ahead and unplug your subwoofer. Here we go. Let's go ahead and remove those. One, two, and three removed, and our subwoofer unplugged. So the next and final step is we're going to actually pull the subwoofer box out. Let's go ahead and lift upwards, tilt it towards you, and there she is. She has her port down below, and the carpeting is opening down below, so it ports right into the rear. So there she is. And this has our aftermarket subwoofer already installed. Like all the other parts of our system, it uses the OEM connector. Finish with the subwoofer in the trunk. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to start tearing it apart into the dash. So first thing we're going to do is actually show you where the premium amplifier is located. In one of our previous videos, we showed you how to install our amplifier. So to get started with tearing down the amp, we're first going to remove two pieces of trim in the footwell. So this piece of trim right here is our first piece of trim we're going to remove. Go ahead and find a nice starting point to work from. There we go, our trim is removed. Next, this panel right here also just clips straight out. There we go, we have our two pieces of trim out. Now we're gonna move on to removing screws underneath this panel. All right, so we just removed our two pieces of trim in the footwell. Next, we're gonna remove this bottom panel underneath that holds our AC and our airbag. There are two screws, they are T20s. There's one right here, we have backed out. And there's another one located in the slot right here. So we're gonna go ahead and unscrew those. And this drops down and we'll take it from there. Alright, so we removed our two screws here and here. Some of you may note our OBD2 sensor is just hanging down. It's unbolted because we've been working on the box. This folds down. This is your AC tunneling for your footwell vents. There is one light back here. We're going to head and unplug. It's unplugged. And this whole unit drops out. We've just removed our side panel. Next we're going to do this front dash beat that wraps around underneath the steering column and over towards the center console. So we can even start unclipping the car clips. Now be careful not to warp this piece, it is kind of thin and fragile. There you go. Now as you can see, all these clips are facing inwards. So when you're pulling, make sure you pull straight out and you don't twist or torque it at the wrong direction. Again, and we're gonna continue with taking out the amp inside the Tesla. So here we have our proprietary light harmonic Tesla amp installed already. Right here is the quick release connector that we can go ahead and take off and push to the side. So right there. Let's shove it in the corner. There you go. Okay. As you can see, it's already bolted on to a second frame by three T30 Torx screws. So they are located right up in here, underneath where the footrest is, over there. And the third location of the T30 screw is located above the footrest at the top of the frame right here. 
So once you have undone the three bolts holding the frame in place, you're gonna go ahead and do a couple things before you take this completely off. We right here we have the OBD2 plug, which is placed right here. We went ahead and unscrewed that for us. And here we have three connectors that you go ahead and unplug and place off the side like so. And once you do that, you're gonna grab the unit, rock backwards, pull straight down, and you'll have the amp out. All right, so we now have our amp removed from the car. Here's the unit with a beautiful light harmonic amplifier on it. There are four T30 bolts that we're gonna go ahead and remove real quick. All right, now here we go. We have our amp. And here is the media unit. It sits in the car just like this, facing forward. You can see our connectors for our antennas. And right here is where the OBD2 plug will hang. And as you can see, there's your one bolt, your second bolt, and your third bolt. This is the one really annoying one that's back way up in the footwell. All right, we just finished with our driver's side. We're gonna start working on our passenger side now. Just like on the driver's side, we're gonna go ahead and remove this sensor piece. We already had it broken mostly loose. So there we go. Again, we have that one single connector. There we go. We can go ahead and set this aside. Next, here's a lower piece of trim right here that goes underneath the glove box. Get a nice grip on it. Pull straight down. And off it comes. As you can see, it's got all the clips. And its tab goes upwards, covering the bottom hinges of the glove box. Next, just like on the driver's side, we remove these two pieces of footwell trim. There's our second piece. So the next thing we're going to do, just like on the driver's side, is we're going to remove this section of upper trim. It goes around and down around the head unit. All right. And there we have it. You can see all of our clips. Just finished removing the amp. Next thing I'm going to do is remove the glove box unit to access this piece of trim. So what you're going to go ahead and do is there's a total of six screws. One, two, three, four. Another two are on the inside the glove box. Five and six. Now these are T20s just like the rest of the car. So let's go ahead and unbolt these. Okay, so we've just unbolted the six bolts that hold the glove box unit in. You can go ahead and gently slide it out. First thing you notice is there's gonna be a wire right on top that goes to the inside glove box light. There we go. Next thing is, there's two plugs. There's one right here that goes to the top of the motor. There's one right below it that goes to the bottom of the motor. So we're gonna go ahead and unplug those. All right, so if you look here, here is the top clip that went in, and this is the bottom clip. And as you can see here, this is where the top clip went to, and this is where the bottom clip went to. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lift this the dash up 
uh, dash. Only the front part needs to come up about half an inch to actually be able to remove these. So that's what we're going to work on next. Okay, so we've lifted the dash up. There's a whole bunch of car clip, just like we've seen in all the other components, lining the inside. As you can see, one right there. So to remove this piece of trim, there's one screw right here. That's a T20, and another one right here as well. So we're going to go ahead and remove those two. And there's two more clips right here that go into this head unit frame. So we're going to go ahead and remove this piece of trim. So we've unscrewed everything. Here's our dash piece. You can start peeling from this end, work your way down to these two clips down here. Again, you can see your clips. This is your air vents. The piece lines up just in there. So the next thing we're going to work on is move ahead onto the driver's side and work on removing the trim over there. The next thing we're going to work on on the driver's side is getting this front dash gauge bezel out. So there's a dust cover here. It's preferred to have the steering wheel in its lowest position. You can go ahead and fit your finger behind this tab, pull out towards you. There you go. Now it reveals two, reveals two screws underneath it. There's one right there. And there's one mirrored on the other side right here. And there's two on top, one here. And one here. We're going to go ahead and remove those and remove this bezel. So we removed our screws. So once you have that, you can go ahead and remove your, your bezel. As you may have noticed up top here, we have this piece of the dash propped up like we did before, revealing all these screws underneath the dash. So the next thing we're going to remove, do is remove this piece of trim right here and this piece of trim right here. There's one screw up top underneath the dash right there. And there's two down here. That we're going to go ahead and remove to pull this piece out. Same with on this side. There's one screw right here and one screw on top. Again, two clips right underneath my fingers to this frame right here that we're going to go ahead and undo. So let's go ahead and work on that. So we have our bolts removed with our trim. As you can see here, we have our two clips plus our one, two, three screw holes. This guy is always really tricky to remove. I like to stick my hand behind here to get to these two clips. You can see them here, here. There's our one screw hole below, our one screw hole above. I'm not going to remove this today, but if you'd like to, this is your instrument cluster. There's two screws up top here and here, and two below, and it just slides straight out. And there's two connectors behind that, and that's how you remove and or replace your instrument cluster. Next, we're going to work on removing our big media center. Look up top, there's two screws up there. There's one on either side, one here, and one here. So we're going to go ahead and get working on that. So, these top two screws, along with the two on the side, are continuing the theme of Torx T20 bits. Next thing they do, is there are two plugs on either side. This one is green, the other one's black. This one's for the glove box right here. And the other one is for your hazards. So before removing this, make sure that those two are unplugged. All right, so once we have everything unhooked and unbolted from this section, we can go ahead and slide this outwards and tilt it towards the driver's side. It's already cockeyed at that angle. It's gonna make it easier to move all the plugs behind it. So let's go ahead and remove this. So here we are, we have the head unit tilted outwards. Be careful of this pin up top, not scratching your trim as you're removing it. So here are all of our connectors. They're all color coordinated. So the black goes in the black, gray goes into the gray, brown goes in the brown. So you can go ahead and start unplugging. Please make sure that your car is off. I know it never truly turns off, but you can go ahead and make sure that your console's off and your gauges are off. So let's go ahead and start unplugging. We, go. we have all of our connectors unplugged. So we can go ahead and slowly remove the head unit. And there we have it. Take a look at the back. Here we go. There's all of our plugs. 
Here's all of our bundles and wires. Now that we have the unit removed, I'd like to take a minute and discuss the wiring with you. So as you can see here, this is a heat sink and right above it, we have all of our inputs for these our antennas, our Wi-Fi, our GPS. These two are our USB inputs. Now this audio board is also made by SYN. These are audio connectors for outputs and inputs. These two also have power pins that supply power to the amp as well as the main circuit board. Now here in our bundling, these bundles to the side, these are our audio connectors. And if you see here in our chicken scratch diagram, you can go ahead and pause the video and take a look at it. This is our black connector, gray connector, teal connector. This is our uh, amp connector over in the corner. This is an input. These are our outputs. Uh, 6A and 7A, they provide power to the amp. These are our signal outs, our lift gate, our subwoofer in the front of the car. These are our inputs, 1A, 2A, etc. They all come from the teal connector. On the gray connector, we have our uh, rear side, our liftgate center, which is the buzzer that you hear when you're opening and shutting your liftgate. And this has power as well, as well as some other audio output pins that are not occupied currently. Same with here. These two happen to be for the tweeters. In an hour to continue the interior teardown, we're going to go ahead and remove this whole center console unit. So first thing we're going to do, you can see these two clips. This holds this in place. There we go. These two go down. These two go up. We can go ahead and set this aside. Next part, here's this little trim piece up here that again is just clipped into place. And take note, it's shorter on the driver's side and longer on the passenger side. Now that you have out, you have easy access to grab the carpeting and remove the carpeting. The carpeting is held in place by Velcro. Once you have the Velcro carpet out, you can go ahead and you have access to two bolts. We're going to unbolt those. As you can see, we have our two bolts out. Next thing you're going to do is again on this unit, there's one bolt right here and again on the other side. Just to clarify, these are 10 millimeter bolts. Down here, you're going to find some wiring that you're going to have to remove. There's four plugs in total. There's two right here that are for USB. There's one that's got signal input from over there and another one that has power for your 12 volt DC. So let's go ahead and remove this bolt and the one that's on the mirrored side. Once you've done everything up in the front, unbolted all of that, you're going to go ahead and reach around to the back side of this console. And you can see here that we've already undid it partially, but there's this panel. You're going to go ahead and pull that right off and it's held together by clips along the edges. Go ahead and pull straight out, put it on side. Once you've done that, you can see that there's two 10 millimeter bolts right at the bottom. You're going to go ahead and undo those as well. So we forgot to mention one thing. Uh, we just undid the rear. We also forgot to mention that down here, there's again two more T20 just like the rest of the car bolts that we're going to undo. Once these are undone and the ones in the rear are undone, this whole unit is ready to be lifted up and out of the car. Let's go ahead. Now I have the unit out of the car. All we did was lift straight up and got it through the door. Now I would like to quick take a quick moment and tell you that this side unit is held in by clips as well. So if you want to, you can grab, remove this along with the other side. And this panel will now be free to pull out and remove as well. And I'll give you access to your USB and your 12 volt and everything else inside of this unit. Thanks for watching the video, guys. And I hope you learned something new along the way. I'm Aaron. And I'm Brody. And if you own a Tesla or you're planning to own a Tesla, I please urge you to check us out at lightharmonic.com and follow us on Instagram at LH Labs.